Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's this morning. Um, a couple of announcements before we begin. Did everyone, in addition to the uh, bulletin, receive the, the insert, the, the, the bulletin insert? Okay, because we'll use this. Um, today we were celebrating the uh, baptism of Michael James Propchek. And so when it comes to that portion of the service, the baptismal liturgy, you will find all in here in this, in this part. This week, I will be in, in St. Louis for a uh, retreat with the Order of Lutheran Franciscans. And so I will, I will not be uh, here I will be back for next Sunday, but I will not be here during, during the week. Therefore, uh, Bible study and so forth will, will be canceled, uh, will be canceled this, this week. Yesterday was really, uh, yesterday was, or last week, was really a great, a great picnic, and I enjoyed it so much, and I know that many of you did as well, and so I just want to thank all of you who, who were there for the picnic, those who participated, those who helped to prepare meals uh, or prepare side dishes and, and, and food. Um, I think it is safe, very safe to say it was a good time had, had by all. Are there any announcements from the congregation today? Any announcements from the congregation before we begin? I just want to check and make sure, uh, David Wood, are you up there somewhere? <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you will come down and assist me with the baptisms as the congregational president, then when it comes to that point, I, I have jobs for you to do. Also, we want to welcome everyone who's watching us online and for those who are not able to be with us here in person uh, in person this morning please know that that you are as far as we are concerned you are you are part of this of this community and part of this service and and we look forward to when you may join us in person again are there any god sightings today that people would like to offer any god sightings yes um alice Okay. Thank you. It is. And and um, did everyone get a magnet when you came in today? Great. Um, take another one when you leave and give it to a neighbor or a family member or someone that, that you would like to, to invite to church in, in the future. Um, yes, we've, I've used those before with other congregations, and thanks to Paul, because Paul put it, Paul put it together, but um, I had shared this idea that we had used from other churches, and it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it looks beautiful. So thank you, thank you, Paul. Any other God sightings this morning? If not, then let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us be at prayer. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Spirit calls us together as people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humanity and gentleness. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours, and for hearts that are not at rest within ourselves. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships, and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For jealousies that divide families and nations, and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God and for our carelessness with the fruits of creation, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And for idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, holy God, holy and mortal, Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is All Our Welcome.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we hear God's holy word for us today. First reading, Ephesians 4, verse 1 through 6. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with love another in love. Making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The, wo the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, go and call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I invite the young people to come forward for our children's sermon this morning. Margo, do you want to come forward with us today? I can get her. Oh, okay. Spring. Oh, sure. Go, go, go.
no more go how are you today God loves you. So, today is a special day. Today, we are going to baptize Michael James. Do you know Michael James, Margo? Yeah, you know him? Yeah. Is he a good dude? Okay. <laughs> He's okay. Okay. Um, well, he's going to be baptized today. Come on, Orion, come join us. You're not too late. Here we go. Can you sit over here beside Serena? Or Serena? Sit over here on this side. So, do you know what it means to be baptized? Who knows what it means to be baptized? What happens? What, what, what happens when someone is baptized? Oh, their sins get forgiven. Yeah, and, and what is it that I do? Well, let me change that. What is it that God does that, that makes that happen? <laughs> what, what, I mean, specifically, when, when Michael James comes up, what am I going to do? I'm going to pour I'm going to pour water on his head first. Yep, I'm going to pour water on his head first and then I'm going to put oil oil on his head to anoint, to anoint him. Right? And and like Serena said that one of the gifts of baptism is that it 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 is that which reminds us that our sins are always forgiven. And another thing that baptism does, another gift of baptism, is that it makes us all part, all a part of God's kingdom. It makes us all a part of God's family, right? Yeah, it does. Isn't that cool? It makes us all part of God's family. And so today, we are going to welcome Michael James into this family here at, at St. Mark's. And sometimes what I find helpful to, re to remind me of baptism and to remind me of my baptism and to remind me of, of uh, the fact that God forgives my sins and that I'm all part of this family is, is that when I pass by the baptismal font, I like to stick my fingers in it and, and make the sign of the cross, right? Because that reminds me that God has chosen me too, just like God chose each one of you and everybody out here to be God's beloved son. So let us, let us pray. Can we hold hands to pray? Can we hold hands? Okay, you're good. You're good. Let, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you this day for the gift of baptism, and we pray for Michael James all the days of his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you. You may return to your seats now. There were two verses of scripture that I failed to communicate to Paul to, to include in today's gospel lesson. And those are just the two verses that immediately precede, that immediately precede the verses that we actually read, or the verses that I actually read in John chapter 4. And so... Uh, let me let me also read these two verses for you as well, because they they tie 
very much into what I will be sharing this morning. So, Jesus, well, I'm actually going to begin, I'm actually going to begin at at John chapter 4, verse 11. The Samaritan woman said to Jesus, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it, and his sons and his cattle? And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks from the living water, or from this water, will thirst again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give will never thirst. The water that I shall give will become in you a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Rachel, oh, first, grace, mercy, and peace to you from our living God and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rachel always used her rocky start in life as a convenient excuse for making poor relationship decisions. As an adult child of an abusive parent, Rachel perceived that her childhood was part of the reason that she had an inability to control her anger. But in a candlelit room full of other women, Rachel poured her tears to the Lord, declaring that she was ready to move on. She decided that her earlier life could motivate her toward positive goals rather than negative goals. Well, the Samaritan woman's life had been hard and painful as well. She hadn't always made good choices, and now she didn't want to face the people in her community because they all looked down on her. They looked down on her because of her bad reputation, which was due to her poor past relationships. And so it came to the point that the Samaritan woman at the well didn't even want to be around the other women, and so she would go at noon to the well to draw water rather than at 6 a.m. when all the other women went to the well to draw water. She had no encouragement. She had a lack of friends. She lacked friends. And all the excuses that she used for hiding out and going to the well at the wrong time of day were just part of her experience. Her excuses were all very good, except that day she met Jesus at the well. And she saw that confronting her past, instead of making excuses, could change everything. Excuses are those marvelous things that that we reach for to explain to others and to ourselves our lack of productivity or performance or commitment. Some have favorite excuses like, well, I'm shy or I'm adopted, or I'm too thin, or I'm married too early, I'm married too late, I'm not married at all, I had children too soon, I don't have enough money, I have too much money, I didn't get an education, or I'm not qualified for that position, my parents didn't love me, I didn't have a pleasant childhood, I didn't have a father, or I didn't know the one that I had. 
I was sickly growing up. I'm sick now. I don't have transportation. I'm too heavy. I'm not experienced. I'm too young, too old, too dark, too light, or just plain too tired. You see, oftentimes it's not what happens to us, but how we choose to respond to those things that is most important. The Samaritan woman came to the well with lots of excuses. She was there because of poor relationships, trying to escape prying eyes and gossiping tongues. She was there as a victim of habit, history and heritage. All were very good excuses for why she couldn't live beyond her mistakes. But Jesus gently peeled away the excuses one by one. He carefully moved from a discussion of, of water retrieval, of, of, of getting water from the well, to a discussion of worship until she had no more excuses to hide behind. Jesus knew how to reach into the heart of this woman and how to touch the tender cords of her heart. Grace flowed through her open heart like, like the virtue flowed from the hem of the garment of another nameless woman in Scripture who had an issue of blood. Jesus was teaching her to live decisively and without excuses. Samaritan woman stood in the hot desert sun, transparent to Jesus. The reasons why she came to the well at the wrong time of day were forgotten. The reason why she separated herself from the community disappeared. The excuses for not living fully, life fully dissipated, and the excuse of habit and history evaporated. She was to become a free woman who no longer needed excuses in her life. For many of us, the problems that we encounter day in and day out may remain the same. But if we are able to change our attitude towards those problems. We might perceive the same problems in a different light. We may not choose when or how we will die, but you can choose how you spend eternity. You don't choose when or how a child or a spouse dies, but you can choose how you remember their living. You may not have chosen your eye color, but you can change that. You may not have chosen the trials that incapacitate you, but you can choose how to respond to them. You may not have chosen your failures, but you can choose whether to live, whether to lie where you fall, or whether to get back up again and fight for another day. You see, men and women journey through life concerned about how others see us. And so we rearrange who we really are to suit others. Since we are more concerned with whether we are liked or whether others want to be with us, we often change our lives to accommodate others. The Samaritan woman begged through the five relationships and was cohabiting with another. It was one way for a desperate woman to have enough food, enough clothing, and enough shelter. It's how she learned to take care and protect herself, but it wasn't the most beneficial way. And so 
In the presence of Jesus, this Samaritan woman was able to discern that this stranger, Jesus, would not harm her. She discerned that the, the confrontation was to help her, not harm her. And when she blurted out in confession that I have had five husbands and the one that I'm living with now is not my husband, Jesus did not condemn her but he liberated her. Jesus essentially said, Samaritan woman, take the living water that I offer and you can be free from all, of, all those excuses that have tied you down for so long. You see, the difference between success and failure in life is often how we use what happens to us. In our lives. Women left with only tattered pieces of cloth can turn them into quilts to keep their families warm. George Washington Carver took the lowly peanut and developed the research that, that supported the founding of a whole new industry. Used clothing can be recycled through nearly new shops like our own Backyard Angel. And we can turn those things from the past into blessings for the future. You see, for the Samaritan woman, the invitation to return and reflect upon her past ended up freeing her from excuses. Her future was greater than anything in her past. What was in front of her was greater than what was behind her. Do not use yesterday's mistakes as, a, as an excuse to move forward into the future. It's not what we have that matters, it's what we do with what we have. From sunrise to sundown, you and I make thousands of choices every day. You did not choose the time of your birth or who your parents were or your siblings, but you can choose how to relate to them. God gave us the power to choose. You cannot change other people, but you can change yourself. And the next time that you are about to relate to someone, think about how you will communicate. But truly, the good news in today's lesson is that ultimately, ultimately, when it comes to God, we don't have to choose. When it comes to God, God chooses us. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And that's precisely what's going to happen in a few moments. Today, God chooses Michael James to be God's beloved son forever. Just like God has chosen each and every one of us here today, God chooses us despite anything else that has happened in our past. God, through Jesus, offers us living water for new life. And because of this living water, we are able to overcome the hurts and the pains of the past. Through God's living water, broken relationships can be mended and broken people can become whole again. Jesus invites us, as he invites the Samaritan woman today, to live anew in God's living waters which has the power to cleanse all hurts, all circumstances, and all sin. God has called us 
and God has chosen us, and nothing, nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all servants of the gospel. Equip rostered and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Form confirmands and catechumens into disciples. And this day we ask, O oh Lord, that you would surround Michael James Propcheck with your never-ending love, that you would send into his heart your Holy Spirit, that he might always know that he is your beloved son. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Safeguard the environment, clean polluted rivers and lakes, preserve the mighty tree and the tiny mustard seed, and send advocates for sustainable practices. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations. Instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil, to free those who are, protect, who are oppressed and to protect those facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, we pray for all in any need. Protect those fleeing from war. 
especially in places like Ukraine, Haiti, Colombia, Venezuela. We pray for the peoples of the Middle East. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would use their hearts to open themselves to one another. We pray for the shelter of any who are in poverty. We pray that you would use us to clothe the naked and to soothe all who grieve and to heal the sick, especially today, O oh Lord, we pray for Jack, Nadine, Susan, Carol, Alice, Rosemary, Judy, Holly, Wick, Alice, Sarah, Dom, Jody, Kristen, and Sarah. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today and those absent from our assembly. Grant safety to those who travel and refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. We give you thanks and pray for your presence among Diana, Tom, Marcia, Mark, Paul, Aaron, Adam, Mark, Dave, Kim, Ron, Claire, Dylan, Mark, Pat, Paul and family, for Mel, Bill and family, Rose and family, for Pat, Cindy and Val. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we thank you for the saints who have now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel. And we give thanks for all of our faithful friends and family. And we give thanks for Nana and Louise and for all children this day who inspire us to see and to reach for our better angels. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and as we sing together, wade in the water, I invite the baptismal party to come forward and to gather around the baptismal font.
God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through this sacrament of holy baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the light of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have this child baptized? If so, say, we do. As you bring this child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibility to live with him among God's faithful people to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that this child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world that God has made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say, we do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say, we do. People of God, do you promise to support Michael and his family? Do you promise to pray for them as they seek to walk before the Lord and train this child in the way he should go? I ask now all of us to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, we say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw us away from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. 
Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. James, Michael, or Michael James Propchek, you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue now on the, on the final page as we say together, you belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain the life, sustain the life of Michael with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit and of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Michael James Propchak, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And now let us welcome Michael James Propchak. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. It is appropriate to applaud at this time. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. You may stand and share with one another a sign of God's peace. Continue with As the Grains of Wheat, the offering song.
us pray together the operatory prayer. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory, and in great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to redeem us all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. And Serena, if you would come forward to assist me with communion. Allow me to explain. We invite all people to share in the Sacrament of Holy Communion here at St. Mark's. All people. Who do we invite? All people. And, and so uh, everyone is invited to come forward. And, and during these still COVID times, we offer two methods for you to receive communion. One is you can receive, take the, the prepackaged uh, grape juice and, and wafer and return to your seat with that. And, and then once you've returned to your seat, you may you may uh, uh, you may you may consume it, or we invite you to receive the bread, the uh, a piece of bread, and also pick up an empty glass, and I will pour the wine. This is wine in in this uh, the wine into your glass. Uh, again, all people are invited here uh, as we share the Supper of the Lord. Also, there is the, our offering plates are, are here for your convenience as you come forward.
body and blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. People of God, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace and share the spirit. Thanks be to God.